Hey guys, um, it's Angela. I just wanted to show you a quick um, demo on how to prep your canvases for the upcoming workshop. So I'm trying to make it a little easier for you guys that were a little confused. So um, starting with what to use for that first pass for a good underpainting, the transparent oxides are good. They come in red, yellow, orange, I don't know what else, but there's a variety. There's also other transparent lines like transparent um, earth orange, transparent gold, but the key is the transparent part, but you don't have to use it. I just like that glow. Also, um, you could just use straight up yellow ochre. So I am using the transparent red oxide today to just do the basic underpainting. So I have some paint here, dipping some medium into it. I'm using the spike the spike lavender oil. You could also use Gamsol. So I'm just gonna brush it on and just cover the canvas. You want the paint to just move for that first layer. And I wouldn't use resin gel unless you're desperate. Um, try to do these well enough in advance that they have time to dry so they have that nice tooth to them. If you use resin gel to get them to dry quickly, then the um, it will be very plastic and a, a very fast surface to paint on, which I'm not a big fan of. So that's a basic toning. Um, if you wanted it a little bit lighter, of course, you could rub it down a little bit. So you have options. So that would be a the minimum toning. Um, then you also can take one that's toned and then do another layer. So I might decide that, again, you can do whatever you want. There's no right or wrong. Just, just don't do something you hate. Um, I might decide, well, I want a little bit of a dark somewhere on this canvas, maybe. I have no idea what I'm going to be painting. Trying to leave open stroke, let the underpainting come through a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of blue over here. Just keep it super loose. Let's throw in. A little bit of yellow ochre. And just for fun, we'll throw in a little orange. It can always be covered up, even. So, just really loose, easy. Just giving some history on the canvas will make the, your painting a lot more exciting. Then you also can use um, old paintings to paint on, which I will be probably painting on one of these or another in, in the workshop. Just these were starts that never went anywhere. I also could come on to one of these starts that have a already, there's a probably two or th two, two, at least two layers, maybe three layers of paint there. I could come in and organize that a little bit better if I wanted. You know, I could come in even with another layer and say, okay, put in some some, you know, some more history here. Don't get, create texture, but don't get too crazy with it so that you don't want a really big blob of paint somewhere in the end product that you didn't really want. But all this building, um, I don't like that green, it's already there. Um, yeah, so, and you could even throw in some drips if you want, but not, don't go too crazy with that. So, this is how to prep. 